friends, good afternoon or good evening. Welcome to another edition of the Bill Crane Report. Chris Gleason uh, by my side. How can things go wrong? I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. I don't want to know either. <laughs> <laughs> well, jumping right into it, um, yesterday we had shootings uh, down in Florida at a school. 17 people are dead. Oh, no. Now, they haven't identified them as to kids or teachers quite yet. Okay. But there are five more in critical condition at the hospital. Is it elementary school or a high school? I believe it's, I don't know. I don't know. But I do know the shooter went there. <laughs> that's, that's for sure. Yeah, and he was, and he's 19. Um, the kids looked like Maybe junior high, okay. as you were marching out. Um, so, what do we take away from this, this whole affair? Uh, I've put down some thoughts. Um, a large percentage of our population are taking mind-altering drugs. Mm -hmm, it's true. I think that factors into this. Mm -hmm. Now we get into the argument stuff here. Okay. A violence on TV and the movies are commonplace and extremely graphic. Mm -hmm. And is, for all intents and purposes, unrated. True. It's whatever the TV bozos figure they can get away with, they do. The people who produce this garbage constantly push the envelope. And we are so stupid in our approach. Um, they mandate you can't show boobs on TV. <laughs> but you can look at all kinds of gruesome violence mm -hmm. on mainstream TV. You can look at murders and mass, mass murders. And NCIS has got some gruesome stuff mm -hmm on um, at the uh, autopsy table. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, now I know it's not real, but boy, it sure mm -hmm. looks real. And so, your reaction is real. Yeah. So what's worse for some kid? If we show boobs, is he gonna go get a gun and start shooting? No. But if we show violence, it all feeds into uh, this whole well, thing I'm building up to. Violent video games. Huh? Now, I got to tell you, my kids played video games. Mm -hmm. And that was, well, Patrick is, uh, Peter is, Peter's 34 to yesterday. So, 20 years ago, he was playing, and I'm s sitting there watching him, I'm going, holy cow, driving around the city, killing people, and <clears throat> now, it's ten times worse. Um, this stuff's unbelievable. Uh, just the thing for adult-minded nitwits. Uh, psychiatrists and therapists. Patient confidentiality. Hmm. Now, what happens if uh, I bring little Brewster to see you? And little Brewster says, I want to go kill people. That's what I'm going to do when I grow up. Two more years, and I'm going to steal daddy's guns, and I'm going to blow away a whole bunch of those kids in school that called me a doofus. Are you going to call the police and say, you know, I get one with a real rattled brain, and I don't like the sounds of what he's telling me. But you can't do that, can you? Nope. How do we deal with that? Well, a lot of times the parents know that something's wrong and the parents see things and they take it to the psychologist or whatever just to verify their thoughts. I mean, I've read a book about what's wrong with Kevin and the mother knew all along that there was something wrong with him and he would commit violence. But they always, people always hope that it's not going to happen. Yeah. I, and you said two interesting things. You said parents. 
Too many are single parent families where either she or sometimes he is working two jobs to keep the whole mess together. He doesn't even know his kids' names, for heaven's sakes. But also, parents don't have a parenting drive. When they come home, they've had it. They don't want to deal with the kids. They don't want to go that extra mile and take their kids into consideration. They just say, go there. I'm going to sit down and watch TV and have a beer. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Or light up some pot mm -hmm. or whatever. It's an escape. Yeah. Um, so parenting is out the window. That's right. So it's, all right, drag yourself up. I'm not going to raise you. You're on your own. And so that, the kid that, goes out on the streets and... That worked okay in the past when there weren't that many people who said to their kids, you're on your own, because those kids would go to other families and they would get brought up there. Or they'd go to the school. And being a former teacher, I get a little upset with saying that because they expect the, t the school to bring the kids up these days. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that stuff about Hillary was peddling. It takes a village to raise a child. It's true. Uh, I, this, uh, you know, uh, well, the school's got to do it. The church has got to do it. The neighbors have got to do it. Well, how about the parents doing it? Well, it's a joint effort. Everybody has to take their part. And getting back to the video games, the thing is, your children may not be so prone to violence, but the kids that are younger have had that ever since they could walk and talk. So they've had complete immersed, immersion, immersion in yep. it. So it's not like the other kids that had, you know, three or four years of regular viewing and then they got this. The other thing is you can't stop violence. I've seen parents who have cut out all this stuff for their kids, even cut out Halloween, and the kids still grow up wild. So I don't know how that works. But even if you don't give a kid a toy gun, the kid picks up a stick and plays it with it as a gun. So there is that tendency for people to be like that. It's the extent that it's happening that's the problem. Hmm. Well, I, I can tell you, if you've got a kid who is very impressionable, who's very withdrawn, who doesn't make friends easily, um, and is angry, and then you feed him these violent mm -hmm. video games. I mean, it's, it's like the witch mixing the brew, you know? Nothing good is going to come out of that stew pot. And another thing is, Americans feel that guns and pills can solve all your problems. They don't think of willpower or strength or coping. And now they're beginning to teach some coping skills at the high school because these kids don't have it. Uh, I, I don't agree the gun, on the gun analogy that guns can cure everything. Pills, I understand. The booze, I understand. Uh, the creature comforts, I understand. The fancy car, I understand. I don't, the gun. Guns, for the most part, are protection for the home and or hunting or target shooting. Well, you have a problem with your mother-in-law. You shoot her and she's no problem anymore. She shouldn't have been mouthing off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Uh, it, uh, mm, I don't buy that one. That doesn't happen that often. Uh, illegal gun owners do not commit the crimes. I'm talking about people that have a license to carry or something like that. Less than a quarter of 1%. That's because the people who are owning guns legally are law-abiding citizens. Bingo. They're different people. That's right. Now, the people that buy guns on the street, the steal guns, they're only doing it for one purpose, right. illegal use. Right. Yeah. Gun owners, legitimate gun owners, uh, I'll, I'll bet you, well, <laughs> I know ladies in this town mm -hmm. that have licenses to carry. Okay. 
that have the guns in the purses all the time. <laughs> and if I, and you, I'll bet you, you know a couple of them, and you would never guess who they are. Oh. <laughs> now, but I got, one swore me to secrecy, but they're packing. Why? Um, they have a job where they're possibly on the road. They have to go to some cities that maybe aren't the greatest in the world. And they have to perhaps do business at night. They may have a dinner with clients or something like that. They got to go in a dark parking lot to get their car. I don't blame them. Well, I think that's a shame that they have that fear. Oh, I don't agree. <laughs> I think they're being wise and prudent to have that gun with them. Uh, because um, you can't leave your, leave your life in fear. Well, to me, they were leading your life in fear if they're carrying a gun. I don't agree. Okay. So there. <laughs> Our court system is failing us. These political hacks in black robes that buy off on the catch and release system um, as far as I'm concerned uh, they need to get brains or backbones if they're going to be judges and this is another case for electing judges where we have two judges and we can examine, the, the voters can examine their education, their record, their background. Now, the governor sends a, 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 a man's name to the governor's council, and the governor's council goes, yes, governor, elected, you're on the, the bench. Um, this, and you can't remove these guys. Right. But boy, I'll tell you what, if they had to stand election every two mm -hmm. years. What if they were voted for by other lawyers? Or, or oh, mother of God. Well, that, we can't have the foxes having... I, I um, understand what you mean, but I can't see the general public being able to... First of all, they don't vote. Second of all, I think they're not interested in reading and deciding. Okay. Very good point. They don't vote. Okay? You know... Some of these politicians and some of the do-gooders, we need everybody to come vote. Well, I don't give a damn whether they vote or not, because if they don't vote, mm -hmm. it's because they don't know what's going on, mm -hmm. they're not interested, and they're the last people in the world I want voting. Mm. I really and truly want people that know what's going on that understand the issues, that understand the candidates, I want them making intelligent decisions. I don't want somebody going, dum da dum 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 let's see, his name is Stepaniak. Oh, he's a Polak, I'm not gonna vote for him. Oh, O'Brien, an Irishman, yay, I'll vote for this guy. I'm just, these people, I, 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 they just, Put nexus beside names. So why did they decide to make a, a judgeship non-elective? Well, there's two schools of thought on that. Um, there's a big part of the country elects their judges, oh. um, especially the Midwest and down south. Hmm. Uh, the others say, no, um, the governor will go to a university and say, who do you folks uh, regard as the top judicial minds in the state? Mm. Uh, that, well, let me tell you something. That doesn't work because a, the best legal minds in the state are making money hand over fist. They pay judges a buck and a half a year. So who becomes a judge? Mm. A guy that can't survive uh, by hanging his own shingle out. So it's welfare for uh, attorneys. Oh, anyway. Well, then the other 
problem comes up. If the judges sentence everybody like they should, where are we going to put all these people? I'm all for building more jails. Okay. I don't How have any problem with that What do you think of privatizing jails? You know what? You could probably convince me of that. But you know, I think sometimes privatization sounds better than it is. But what do you think of leaving Pondville Hospital empty for 20 years? I mean, they could have con tur turned that into a minimum security prison for first offenders. Um, you know, throw a double uh, chain link fence around it, barbed wire at the top, and so how did it go from the state to the archdiocese? The archdiocese bought the hospital because they own St. Elizabeth's and some other hospitals. Um, they just said, well, this would be a good one to add to our collection okay. of hospitals. Um, and it didn't work out. Yeah. They started losing money. And uh, they couldn't find anybody to buy it. I think the archdiocese still owns it. Well, what about those other hospitals that owned it for a while? Uh, well, down the tubes. No, they, they, it all reverted back to the archdiocese, I'm mm. sure. Yeah. Who knows? You know, it wasn't a good idea in the beginning, I don't think. Mm. Um, how about this? Better security and strictly controlled access to schools. by trained army and ex-military ex personnel that are armed. The kids are gonna think it's more of a prison than they do now. <laughs> do you know what? At least they'll live through it. Mm -hmm. Oh, we uh, uh, won't, uh, I'm writing a sentence to myself. Oh no. Won't men carrying guns traumatize a little Roscoe and Penelope? Look, they see guns on TV 40 times a day. To see them in person and understand they are protecting them and uh, have the security idea articulated by teachers and parents will prevent the toddlers from running amok, I think. I don't like if the idea. What, I think it, they should have more security because I think security is lax. And I've seen schools that have, <laughs> they have, you have to buzz to get in, okay? And they just added that buzzing job onto the secretary. The secretary can't be manning that buzzer all the time. They go to lunch, they have to, talk to people, they have to be on the phone. So that's one thing, if they have that buzz-in system, they should have a person whose job is only to buzz that. Also, I've seen schools that have security, and I see the door to the cafeteria left open, or the door left to the dumpster left open, you could just walk right in, especially during the daytime. Mm -hmm. So, so I, somebody walks in with a gun, and they have free reign. That, that's that's not a good idea. No, that, but how? And and how did this kid get in down in Florida? Boom, 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 boom on the lock. Really? Then push the door open. It's, that's one report that I heard. So, I imagine they called nine one one. So how long did it take the police to get there? You know what? If the police got there in say five minutes, mm -hmm. uh, fifty kids could be dead. Okay, well, that's automatic assault life guns that should be outlawed. Um, because that would solve the problem. If you can't have rapid fire guns, you know. So I, so I bring in four uh, automatic pistols that each got 14 rounds in it. Yeah, but that's a little bit harder than just getting a hold of one gun. Boom, 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 boom. Nah. I, I don't like the idea of having kids see armed people walking around. I think that just desensitizes them further towards guns. You know, back in the old days, when we used to live on farms, mm -hmm. you know, the kids would see death in animals all the time. And 
Porky Pig would end up on the table, being uh, in the form of pork chops, you know? Kids understood that. Now, oh my God, hunters are going to kill Bambi. That's awful. Uh, you know, we, we've lost the understanding of the relationship between humans and animals. Uh, it's, it's nuts. I was, I happen to overhear a conversation where um, two guys were talking about police work. Okay. And one said, yeah, you can't believe how many calls we get about animals. Mm. All these people come out from the city out here to the wilderness. Never have seen a bunny before mm -hmm. or a skunk. Oh, the first thing you do, call the police. There's a skunk in my yard. Yeah, well, that's okay, ladies. Hunting for bugs. Don't worry about them. I want them out of here. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Uh, oh, a fox is in my yard. Mm. You know, I've had, well, it hasn't been for a while, but I have had nesting gray foxes behind my house. And on the back of the lot, along the stone wall, a gray fox would go across most nights. Mm -hmm. I'm sure it was the female hunting for food for her young that were back in the den. Okay. What am I going to do? Have the police come down every single time the fox walks through my yard? Oh, no, it caught two mice. Mm -hmm. Well, have the fox shot. I mean, after all. That's... Ah, we're getting way off. So, how about this? Common sense starts at home with solid values from parents that really care about their kids. Learning what's right and wrong. Attending church regularly. And spending as much time as possible with the kids and being part of their lives is a key component in raising children. Look at the killers as a whole. Mm -hmm. Family life. They're ignored, neglected, abused, isolated. Is it any wonder they become mentally unstable and act out? Quite frankly, I'm surprised it doesn't happen more often. Um, why schools are chosen? Because the shooters have little or no self-esteem. They have nothing going on in their lives. They crave attention. Now, this is something somewhat normal. I think we all do. Uh, so they act out violently. They want to make a big splash in their one dive off the diving board. They are screaming, look at me. And where did they go to kill a bunch of kid people? The same place you go when you're fishing. You go where the fish are. Schools have lots of kids to kill. Well, it makes they're all there, bunched together. Right. Well, then it makes the shooter feel powerful. I have control over them, and they wouldn't shoot a bunch of adults because they have more of a challenge yeah. there. Remember, this is their only splash mm. off the diving board. So it has to be as horrific as possible. So schools are an easy target. We've got to make schools a difficult target. But also I think it's probably memories that they had when they were a child trying to get back at the administration, the teachers, the principal that they had no control over when they were younger. So that now they can go back and show them off. Yeah, there may be some of that, but I think it's more anger with everything. Or as a friend of mine used to say, down with up. Um, it, it's, they hate everything. Uh, they're frustrated. There's no point to their lives. And uh, they're tired of being ignored. I agree with that, but I'm not sure that's why they choose schools. All right. You, you really think there's some deep-set hatred against the schools? 
I think so. Mm. I think there is. Did you ever have any kids hate you? A couple. How did you Not deal? Much. How did you deal with that? Well, I didn't have to because they they were under control. Hmm. They never acted out though, or. Well, I, I know of instances when, not against me, but against other teachers, where kids have brought weapons to school to k kill teachers. And even at a, on the high school level, they brought shotguns in to shoot teachers. Mm -hmm. And I think they, they want their anger against what's outside oppressing them. And I think for schools, maybe some of they got into a lot of trouble in school. They had, they were punished in school. They had detention, and there was nothing that they could do about it. Mm. I never thought of that. I, I mean, I didn't. I wasn't wild about school, but it never occurred to me to. I wasn't angry at the school, really. I think the school was doing the best they could. Yeah, but it, it's sort of, it's like a disciplined. And these kids are undisciplined. They, they, yeah. they can't conform. There's just nothing at home that is housebreaking to them. Right. Uh, they're, they're not being brought up properly, yeah. So how do you make parents be parents? You can't, really. Well, the only thing I can think of is religion, and I'm not a pro-religious person, but I think religion does teach that. Aren't we better with religion than without it? I, I Maybe some religions, not others. But people get too fanatical about their religion. Hmm. Really? Oh, sure. Well. So um, the, the, the worst re wars have been religious wars. In some, some degree, yeah. We'll, we'll, go, we'll go way back for those. Mm. Um, and I'm afraid my last point will send many screaming, no, no, no. But we must arm teachers, okay. especially ex-law enforcement or ex-military who know how to handle weapons, who know how to react in an emergency. This makes too much sense to be not doing it. I don't think, if you do see that, you won't see it for another couple hundred years. Well, you shouldn't see it at all because they should be concealed weapons. And the only time you should ever see it is if there is a terrible incident. Otherwise, you should never know that the man or the lady is packing. Well, they must know it. They must, Why? It must be common knowledge. If you're going to arm all teachers, it's going to be not common gonna knowledge. Arm all, no, you, oh, no, no, no. Maybe 10% of them. I wouldn't give guns to 100%. I would not p take any group and say, okay, 100% gets guns. No, uh, no matter what kind of group. Which, no, you've got to be an ex-law enforcement, uh, security, military, especially military. I mean, these people know weaponry. They know pressure. They know how to react. And they are the line between the good people and the bad people. Well, I think then you need a policeman, not a teacher carrying a gun. How about a teacher that was a policeman carrying a gun? I think that's rare. I don't think. I don't think. How about how about a guy that had been in the Marine Corps carrying a gun? I think. Those people don't want to go into teaching. I think some of them do. Well, maybe at the high school level, but I can't see yeah. the elementary oh, level. Oh, well, yeah, mostly in the elementary grades are, are ladies. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I can tell you something. I think ladies, some ladies, would do a good job handling their gun. Oh, I don't doubt yeah. it. I think it's something we've got. Listen. If we have a teacher that's armed, we have a guy breaks in and starts shooting, and she's able to drop him in his tracks and saves 15 kids. But you have no, no idea if she's, 
saved any at all if he's dead. That's right. That's right. But you know what he was going to do. He's carrying the oh, gun no. and he's got to shoot. You can't say that. And he well, would have a good lawyer on his behalf or his family's behalf saying, you cannot read what's in that person's mind. Maybe if, he was just going to threaten them. If a guy comes in to a school with an automatic weapon, okay, all bets are off and you drop him because he's up to no good. So what are you going to do? You're going to have people with guns in churches, people with guns at concert halls, people with guns at music halls. You, you're going to put guns everywhere? I get news for you. <laughs> you are. <laughs> <laughs> there are people that pack guns to church every Sunday. Yeah, but do, they don't go with the purpose of protecting the congregation, do they? They go with the, the purpose of protecting themselves and their friends and their family. So what are they fearing? This nut that just shot and killed 17 people? The kid that went to the gay bar down in Florida and killed 50? If someone had had a gun and knew how to use it, the losses would have been much less significant. So what do you do? I mean, what happens when this goes to court and somebody, what gives somebody the right to shoot somebody else? Let me ask you a question. I'll put the shoe on the other foot. Mm -hmm. A police officer mm -hmm. is in a building okay. where the door has been knocked in. Okay. So he goes in and he says, I think I'll take old Bessie out as I go through with my flashlight, and here is a bad guy. How do you know? Because he's pointing a gun at me. Okay. Do I have to wait until he shoots me before I can shoot him? In some instances, this is No, <laughs> he can shoot. If he feels he is in harm, bodily harm, or other civilians are in bodily harm from the guy that's got the gun, that's flashing the gun around, bang! Okay, but the police officer is trained. He's trained to see these situations. He's trained how to handle himself and the, the surrounding people in those situations. What are you going to have us all trained to do that? If it's going to save 500 kids a year, you bet your bippy you're going to, if you go back into teaching, you're going to be packing a 45, fully trained, out on the back lot, firing at tin cans. It's the only way. What about other countries? What about them? They're a mess. Do, do they have this situation? Or? <coughs> I think they did in London. Well, the, the, their situations tend to be less uh, but worse. Uh, a lot of them are knife attacks mm -hmm. where some lunatic starts cutting people up uh, and there's nobody with a gun to shoot them. Um, so th there's some horrible things happen overseas. <laughs> but it's interesting, the American press sees fit not to publish those stories. Well, we don't hear about them. No, we don't. No, that's not the kind of thing Americans need to hear about. You know, uh, they want to just criticize us for carrying guns. But anyway, well, listen, I am proud to say Luke Chu really didn't pass the test. So I'm going to have to work on you. I guess you're going to have to go back through the course again. <laughs> um, A retread. All right, so here we go. Let me ask you another question. Uh, a woman up in New Hampshire mm -hmm. buys a Powerball ticket. Okay. And lo and behold, it's a winner. Okay. $540 million. Okay. She, it is uh, the cash, 352 is the cash out. It's 540 over 20 uh, years. Okay. But if you want 
everything up front is 352. Okay. So she goes and she says, Well, I'll protect myself. There. I signed the ticket and I dated it. Okay? Okay. You think that's a reasonable approach? So nobody else can take it and cash it. All right? So now she's afraid to cash the ticket mm. because the state of New Hampshire and most other states too want to use her oh. in advertising. Look at Here's Christine Gleason. Smile from the camera, yeah. Chris. <laughs> He's the lucky lady that mm. just cashed in on 540 big ones. What did you say? What are you going to do with it, Chris? Tell us all about it. Yeah. yeah. So she's saying, I don't want any part of that circus. And I know people that are going to come after me and say, you bum. You know, you le I lent you 20 bucks 30 years ago. And <laughs> And she says, well, I'm going to get harassed mm -hmm. from noon to night. Mm -hmm. I don't want that. I want my privacy. Now, her lawyer has also said she is a prominent citizen. Oh. Whatever the hell that means. Well, no. Oh, yeah, well, for a positive or a negative, I don't <laughs> know. But she's, so anyway, she's saying, I don't want to cash the ticket. I want to be able to cash it and sign my name Jane Doe. Too late, you already signed your real name right. to it. So, now, the way around this would have been, and this is a hint for you, because okay. your lucky day could be coming. Could be. You get the big one, go to a lawyer, mm -hmm. and he will get a, for a write up a trust for you. All right? And... Um, then you can go cash the ticket as the Flag Bearer Trust, Inc. And that's it. It's all over. Now, I know that ignorance of the law is no defense. I feel sorry for this woman. I wouldn't want anybody to know I hit it for 540 big ones. I would much rather continue my... <laughs> somewhat interesting mm -hmm. life in the dark of the night rather than have spotlights on me and all that stuff. Well, How do you feel? Can, can they force her to be? Yes. Well, if they can force her to be, that's crazy. Well, I no. I they, can, they can't force her. Okay? okay? But they won't cash the ticket. <laughs> oh, clever. Very clever. Yeah. When she's got to bring that in, with her signature on it, and once they pay her, it becomes public knowledge because it says right in the New Hampshire laws under the lottery, everything must be transparent. Nothing can okay. be hidden. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think about this situation? Now, put on your black robes and come in from chambers and pass judgment. So I don't quite understand. Has this been brought to court? Oh yes. And, yep. Here's uh, the judge. He's look at him. He's musing. And so what are what are his two See, choices? Folks, see him musing. So what are his two choices? His two choices are to grant her anonymity okay. and order the state of New Hampshire to pay her, mm -hmm. or to say to her, no, go. She got two choices. Cash the ticket and take the heat or throw the ticket away. And she's threatened to throw the ticket away. Well, I would, I would choose the latter. If she chooses whether she, because I don't think her incident should change what the law is. Do you think the law is fair? No. So I don't, maybe I don't they, think, should, maybe I don't, they should change the law. Maybe this judge should say, I find this law unfair to this lady. Well, it would be unconstitutional. It's not protecting her personal freedom. So, so again, now pass judgment. Well, I don't think the, the judge can do that. I think he can. He's been asked to do it. Oh. And he is 
by the As lawyer? As you can see, uh, yes, uh, this woman has brought a civil uh, case against the state of New Hampshire. Okay. And uh, as you can see, he is really concentrating here <laughs> on his, uh, he hasn't come back with it yet. Has her name been revealed no, yet? No, no. That's the whole thing. She wants to remain anonymous. She wants the $352, a million, <laughs> but she wants to remain anonymous. She does not want to be part of a media circus. Well, somebody along the line knows, I mean, whether the law firm knows or somebody knows along the line, it's her already. There's no way she could have, it's going to leak out there somehow. But um, I think she's right and that the law should be changed. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't think they should be able to compel it, especially since it's a government agency that's giving out the money. If it was a private agency, I think that they could do that. Well, let me, let me pose this differently, a little bit differently, somewhat the same. So the FBI and President Trump are in a hoorah about reports. Mm -hmm. But yet, FBI agents and other people have their name redacted. Oh, we can't print those names. Why not? Because Trump will fire them. <laughs> Perhaps they need firing. But nonetheless, mm -hmm. all right, um, supposing he's sympathetic towards them. And uh, well, still, you know, they re the FBI redacted their names. They blacked them out. I, for the life of me, all right, if national security is at risk, if this guy is a super spy, and has been spying on Ecuador, and he's going to be revealed as a double agent, and Ecuadorian agents are going to come in the dead of the night and slash his throat. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, I understand redacting his name and hiding his identity. But other than that, just because he's a politician <laughs> um, or an ex-governor or something like that, I'm not sure that they should be redacting his name. If they're going to redact his name, she should be able to black out her oh, name, definitely, too. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. I'm on her side. Well, I, I agree that the law should be changed. Yep. Unfortunately, I don't think he's got... If he declares it unconstitutional, I think then, it, you know, she could win. <clears throat> but uh, short of that... The law is written. I think it's going to stand, and I think he's going to order her to. If she wants it, <clears throat> she's going to have to belly up to the bar and admit who she is. Well, all right. Here's some good news. The highest rating for small business um, in history the, was recorded in polling last week. So the highest confidence rating oh. of small businessmen hit an all-time high last week. In Poland? In USA. Oh, in the USA, yeah, okay. So <clears throat> this is, it seems to me, a real sign that the economic policy of President uh, Trump is working. I don't think you can attach an economic policy to any one president. I think it's something that happens over many years. Well, let me put it another way. We got a tax cut, a massive tax cut, and he, he overturned I don't know how many proclamations um, by President Obama and threw them out the window. They had different restrictions for business. Um, and all of a sudden, confidence by the small businessmen has skyrocketed. I, I, I can lay it right at the feet of President Trump. Well, I think President Trump is really a cheerleader for America, and he really promotes optimism. I think that who knows what eventually down the line is going to happen as a result of these changes. But he, he's giving the people confidence anyways. He's, he's giving them hope. 
And I think there's a tailwind coming from other administrations that make things look good, too. Which, which administration in particular? Going, uh, let me see, I'm not too, I know, I know Obama was, was hard on business, but I, I applaud the EPA regulations that I think they were necessary, but they were hard on business. And since a lot of those regulations have been appealed or released or whatever. Rescinded, yeah. And some of them never even went into effect. I think that's happening to help business. But it's a balance here. You know, it's good for business, but you gotta be careful about how good it is for business. Like it's no good if business can push off all kinds of smoke pollutants and things like that. That's great for business, but what about the rest of us? You know what I'm saying? No. Okay, what I'm saying is, I don't know the specifics, but from what I understand is a lot of the EPA regulations that restricted pollutants and other things mm -hmm. like that have been, like you say, rescinded. Some so, of them have, so, but some of the ones that didn't make sense. So the thing is, that means I can get more profit because I don't have all those restrictions on me anymore. It's not costing me money t for those restrictions. So. Ah, that's a relief. Mm. Well, you know, to, to, to your example, um, they stopped all work in certain forests uh, because they wanted to maintain old growth. Mm -hmm. So when trees came down, well, God put them, oh, these people don't believe in God, I forgot. Somehow or other they fell down so let's leave them down. We don't want workers in there disturbing the old growth. So let them just pass into the earth the way nature intended. Yeah, but that adds all the nutrients to the soil. It also, okay, when there's a forest fire, creates an inferno that they cannot fight, mm -hmm. this old growth. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on out in California in some of these places. Yeah. Um, so we have these tremendous forest fires. Mm -hmm. But if we cleared the old growth out, mm -hmm. the stuff that fell down and had a cleaner floor of the forest. See, I, uh, don't, I don't buy that. Oh, I buy it 100%. If the, you're right. If that brush was not down on the ground, the fire would not have lasted so long. It would not have spread so far. Oh, but the thing is, is, there are creatures and animals that live in that. I understand that. And you just, you can't make, an, this is what kills me all the time. People get, like over in Franklin, they've got this reservoir. Mm -hmm. And now they put a playground in front of mm -hmm. it. And now you've got kids there, and you've got families there, and things like that. And they call that conservation. That's not conservation. They get little walking trails around. That's it. not conservation. Yeah. You've got these people going in between animals and their homes and things like that. And you know, over the years, the in the people are going to spread out into that area. You can't have a forest that's a a park. It's either a forest or it's a park. And once it becomes a park, it's no longer conservation land. We could go on and on about this, and I think we could eventually both agree. But um, the ban on anything that had fallen, you can't cut it up. You can't move it out of there was absurd. But they get their machinery in there, and they get their fen men in there, and before you know it, Oops, oops, just like the development in town. They go into a place, oh, we're just gonna cut this so we can build, and then, oh, well, it just happened to be in the way. Before you know it, it's clear cut. Not in Norfolk. Oh, yes, oh, in Norfolk. No, oh, not. yes, right across the street from where my, fa my brother lived. Oh, not in Norfolk. They're sound as a dollar. Mm -mm, oh. mm -mm. I can tell you. You can go right up to 180 Main Street and you can see it. They cut everything down. And it's their private property and they can do that. That's fine, I can understand that. But when it's government property, no, you stay off. You know, 
Um, I'm on your side in this debate, actually, um, because I used to fish and trap in Norfolk. Hard for you to believe, folks, but I caught 29 mink in one year. 500 musk, uh, 437 muskrats in one year, 17 fox in one year. I'd be hard pressed to do that now because we've built every place. We don't have room for the animals anymore. When they put those athletic fields in on 115, oh, yeah. prime animal habitat, mm -hmm. I cried over that. Well, I didn't physically. I was crying in my beer over it, I think. And these kids have to have some place to play. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Let them go out into the woods. Why the hell can't they play in the school playgrounds? Well, the schools don't have insurance. Give me a break. Get a blanket insurance policy and stop hiding behind that. Oh, we don't want them. Yeah, down with up. All right. I'm going to make a prediction. We're not making any headway on my stuff here. <laughs> once pot shots, <laughs> shots, once pot shops open and this stuff is peddled legally, I predict hundreds, if not thousands, of large and small dealers will all of a sudden be out of business. And these are guys who are making 500 or 1,000 bucks a week peddling this crap on street corners right. and all that. These dope peddlers have little, if any, employable skills and will turn to crime mainly, breaking and entering, auto theft, street assaults, robberies, possibly armed robberies, of businesses and stores. They will be arrested and sentenced to jail. Interesting, isn't it? By decriminalizing this poison, a progressive society hoped to empty the jails of all these unfortunate, low-level, nonviolent street dealers. But in doing so, we'll send them back to jail for other crimes. So you're saying once somebody's bad, they're bad no matter the what. The <laughs> law of unintended, unintended circumstances strikes again. Do you see any way of these guys that are peddling pot down dock alleys, on street corners, it doesn't take a mastermind to find them. I can take you to Boston and show them to you. Do you really think that they're going to say, ah, well, I'll get a job working construction. I'll become a steel worker. Or, gee, I'm going to work for Greyhound bus driving buses. Or, well, I'm going to get a job as a school janitor. So it we, ain't going to happen. So we should keep pot illegal to keep these people in business? It should be illegal, period. It's wrong. I think you're just looking for a reason why it should not be made legal. That's it. Well, you were both saying the same thing then. We agree. No. <laughs> it's just like... It, went, it goes from alcohol to cigarettes to pot. It's always, the result is the same. It's just the substance that changes. Do you think that the legalization of pot is going to be a plus for our society? No, not really. Not, not then why totally. are we doing it? We're doing it because... Too many young men are going to prison. No. Well, no. that's what... I don't care. A lot of the leaders said. I think it's if you make something illegal, you make it more attractive to kids. It's more exciting. It's more dramatic to do it. I wonder if that would drop the murder rate if we decided to make murder legal. It is legal, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> An adult, one day only, ticket at Disneyland in Florida now costs how much? 200 $111. And in California, $117. Family of four goes down there, has a couple of Cokes, a couple of hot dogs, and 500 bucks are down the drain. Oh, 
it's crazy. And then when they go there, they have to have a pay for the flight to get there. They have to pay for the hotel to be there. And it's mobbed. So people have money. It's just that they spend it in ways that perhaps are not the best. Um, one more thing, and I think we'll wind it up. Okay. Uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Supreme Court Justice. Okay. She's becoming a little unraveled. Okay. Um, she opined thusly last week. I think it was difficult for Hillary Clinton to get by the macho atmosphere prevailing during that campaign. And she was criticized in a way I think no man would have been criticized. Nonsense. Hillary's as strong as anything. This, I'll, I'll tell you what. I think it's time for Ruth Bader Ginsburg to put in her retirement papers. Mm, I agree. Hang it up and go haunt a house someplace. Well, that was good. All right. Well, all right. We didn't get very far, folks. <laughs> I do apologize. Uh, Christine was yes. cantankerous today and got me in too many battles. <laughs> um, but just to show I'm a good guy, we're going to come back in a couple of weeks and do this all over again. Well, not the same. Look at this. I got oh one, two, three, four, five pages of notes, and I've got the PC stuff, too. Uh -oh. So on that note, folks, sit by your TV for the next two weeks. Stay tuned to NCTV so that you won't miss it. I think the people will. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>